YouTube, Painted Here. Um, I'm here with my husband, uh, Guru, <laughs> as he likes to be called. Um, and today we are going to talk about something that is very near and dear to both of our hearts. Um, we are going to talk about Spider-Man and the dire straits that he seems to find himself in today. So uh, first of all, let's kind of go over what is going down just for anyone who's not really familiar with the whole situation. I'm sure if you've been on the internet within the last 24 hours or so, you probably have seen something about the Spider-Man fiasco. Uh, but just in case, uh, we have a nice little article from Variety here to kind of clue us in a little bit on what's going down, just this play-by-play. -play. Spider-Man's neighborhood has been decidedly unfriendly this week. Bonus points. <laughs> a private and contentious battle over the on-screen future of the beloved Marvel superhero has spilled out into the public square over the past few days. After making nice for two wildly successful films, Sony Pictures, which holds the licensing rights to the Marvel character, will go it alone. As every fanboy and girl out there knows, it will no longer partner with the Disney-owned Marvel Studios on producing sequels. Fallout from the creative divorce has revealed a callous truth about Hollywood's obsession with the bottom line. Studios don't like to cut big checks, particularly when the recipient is a rival studio. This is true, and I don't think it's really news uh, at this point. I'm pretty sure everybody knows how corporations are. We live in America anyway, so. Um, less than 24 hours after Sony's Tuesday announcement that the latest standalone Spider-Man film Far From Home had become the highest grossing film in the studio's 90-year history, news broke that the collaboration was over. Suspicious? A little bit. <laughs> the reports were conveniently timed. I agree. Variety's woke, man. All right, Sony had been in negotiations to keep Feige in the fold as a consulting producer, but Disney, who just this year swallowed 20th Century Fox and all of its Marvel characters with it, left the table after Sony refused to increase its share of the profits. Some reports said that Disney was looking to essentially become a 50-50 partner in the series. Another insider close to the deal said negotiations came up for renewal as long as six months ago, and Sony did not move to act on a new pact. Others with knowledge of this deal disputed this, saying that Disney made it clear it was no longer interested in partnering. The finger pointing has been dizzying. I agree. Um, several insiders said Sony Pictures chief Tom Rothman was willing to give up as much as roughly 25% of the franchise and welcome Disney in as a co-financing partner in exchange for Feige's services. When Marvel took on producing duties on Spider-Man Homecoming in 2015, Disney negotiated for a percentage of first dollar gross and licensing rights for consumer goods. While Spider-Man may never again appear in a Marvel Studios produced film, the character will still be found roaming Disney Disney theme parks, taking photos with families, and emblazoned on merchandise and gift shops. Okay, that is basically the long and short of it in the longest way possible, um, but A plus variety, great writing. So, so how about um, our opinions on this? Um, Guru and I are very big Marvel fans. We're, we're pretty much, you know, self-proclaimed fanboy and girl in the Marvel franchise, so um, so we are really big fans of Spider-Man as well, and this is extremely troubling for us. However, I have heard it said, and this is a comforting thought, that maybe this is just sort of um, posturing, you know, from one big studio company to another, just kind of Disney sort of just grabbing Sony by the cojones and saying, uh, you know, this is what we're going to do. We're just going to walk, you know, essentially, if uh, if we don't get this cut, if y'all don't agree to this, um, or it could be the other way around. It could be Sony doing that to Disney saying, hey, you know, if you're not willing to keep it at 5%, we're not going to let you have the web head. So what do you think about all this, sweetie? Um, I think, honestly, most people are kind of jumping the gun, jumping down either Sony or Disney's throats and being like, how dare you? I think this is still, like... Like you said, early negotiations and things are still going to work out. Honestly, the while definitely Sony definitely can stand to have a lot of profit. Venom made eight hundred million dollars, you know, That's almost true. a billion on its own, and it's yes. just Venom mm -hmm. who's not as big as Spider Man. Yeah, I also feel that despite uh, Spider Verse, uh -huh. the recent Spider Man movies that they've done since pretty much the Spider Man Two, they haven't been the best yeah. and. I think a lot of the success of the recent, like, uh, Homecoming and Far From Home has been because mm -hmm. of 
the shared creative teams. Yes. I so I think that Sony, well, so they can still make a profit with Spider-Man uh, and, you know, and, and all the other characters that they own. Yeah. Uh, I think that really the, the success of, of Spider-Man being in the MCU mm -hmm. and, and sharing with all the Disney characters and being able to continue the story that they've been building yeah. is uh, should be a pretty big deal for them. And so I think that, you know, I'm hoping that they will work together towards uh, fixing that relationship. And that's, that's on Sony and on Disney, you know, uh, you know, having heard a lot about what's been happening with the articles and I know it was kind of, you know, people started jumping down on Sony first and then they started hearing more details and now it's Disney's yeah. fault. I kind of mm -hmm. feel though, it's it's just how corporations and business works. So you know, Spider Man. You know, the new Spider Man movie made a billion dollars. Disney yeah. said we can make more money, and we want to make more money. Yeah. You know, and so they asked for more. I think there should be a little bit more negotiation. Yeah. You know, there's enough room that they can, uh, you know, there's come. Enough room. Yeah. Right. That they can make. They can. You know, make. All right. They don't like fifty fifty. Let's yeah. work it out until we exactly. find something that can. You know, will eventually just benefit the consumers. Yeah. You know? Right. And one thing that I've heard, and I need to actually do a little bit more research on it because everything is still kind of coming out. Um, oh, there's a baby behind me. <laughs> so, uh, is that Kevin Feige actually just sort of like said, hey, I'm done. I'm not really interested in heading any more Spider Man movies. And that that's a big, um, you know, factor in the negotiations kind of going the way that they have. That's what I've heard. I still, you know, I'm hearing it from a couple different outlets, but it's very fuzzy. Like that's literally what I said is as much as they've said is basically like Kevin Feige's not interested in heading any more Marvel uh, or Spider movies, not to scare anybody, Spider-Man movies. Um, so the thing is, uh, if that is true, my guess is that he's kind of tired of this back and forth between the studios. Like, I would assume that that's probably very creatively tiring to have to, uh, you know, listen to two different bosses, you know, sort of barking at you. Studios do have a lot of say in what's what goes on in their movies, you know, and thankfully Marvel Studios has been very good about letting the creative teams sort of do what they want. I think that's where Kevin Feige, or Feige, has thrived, and maybe Sony's kind of being a little bit, you know, hard to work with. Um, I'm not sure, or maybe just the pressure of having two different studios you know, giving their baby, you know, to, uh, to you is a little bit jarring. It's a little bit like harrowing. So I'm not sure, but that's my guess. If that's true, if he's actually said that he's not really interested in heading another Spider-Man movie, because I can't imagine that it wouldn't be a good creative, you know, source of creativity of, of, you know, of films, of stories. I mean, he's such a great character. That's why he's so popular. You know what I mean? So that being said, um, you feel then that the future is they're probably going to work it out they're going to very likely kiss and make up and everybody's just jumping the gun and getting a little bit more riled up than they should which yeah. that's the internet let's be you honest know, it's yeah I, I mean officially you know some sources are saying that uh the deal is done sony's out and spider-man's not with, with the mcu anymore other places are saying we're st they're still working it out. They're still in the middle of negotiations. Yeah. I say even if it is, of, I think even if it is officially over and they've done and they stopped, I'm sure that by the end of the year, by next year, they'll have worked out another deal. Yeah. Because it's just, you know. Friday Summit 2.0, everybody. You heard it here first. <laughs> yeah. It, you know, it's just, uh, it's like, so it's like. There's no reason why Sony can't make a lot of money making their own Spider-Man movies. They have before. Yeah, they have. You know? It's just not nearly this successful. Exactly. Sure. And, part of, and the thing is yeah. that a lot of people that are really close to the uh, source material and, the, and really close to you know the, the, the fandom yeah. oftentimes forget that when it comes to the mass population, the reason a movie makes a billion dollars is not because the fans go to see it. It's because people that... Everyone goes to see it, even yes. people that aren't even really the fans. people that don't know, you know anything about the character. Yeah, exactly. I'm true. a fan of Spider-Man, yes. and I'm going to go see every Spider-Man movie. Yes. But me going to go see Spider-Man movie two or three times, even six times, mm -hmm. isn't going to get the studio to a billion dollars. Right. It's when my grandma wants to see Spider-Man. Yes. And yeah. it's when, you know, people that don't go to the movies or people yes. that didn't see, 
You know, there's people that went to see Endgame. I've personally met people that went yes. to see Endgame My without literally Endgame. <laughs> never having seen a Marvel movie before. Yeah. Like, no, none of them since Iron Man. Right. They've never seen one, but they said, this looks like a big deal. I'm going to go see it. So that's how it makes so much money is from the people that go watch it. And so hearing, oh, this is another Spider-Man origin story. Or it's a Tom Holland Spider-Man continuing, yeah. but with absolutely none of the backstory that they've already built up yeah. included because we can't mention any of the characters except some of the bad guys. Yeah. You know? With, you know, so it's like every, you know, the people, the average person that went to see Far From Home going, oh, look at that. It's Spider-Man with, you know, after Iron Man died and yeah. and what and, and with all the Marvel characters, you know, let's go watch and see what happens. You know, the, you know those ran, random uh, people that aren't interested in the franchise but just saw, oh, this looks like it might be interesting. If they hear, oh, yeah, this new Spider-Man movie doesn't have any Avengers in it, yeah. doesn't have any other characters in it, it's just Spider-Man, a lot of people are just going to say, well, I don't want those to sound very good. Right. Yeah. Well, and they've already, the thing is, they have already kind of, I think, I feel that most of us are burned out on, you know, new Spider-Man. And so I am glad that no matter what happens, Tom Holland has been said to, you know, sort of been yoinked by Sony. So we will still have the same Spider-Man. At least there's that, you know, if things don't get better, as we we're hoping that they will. Um, and Sony just keeps the rights and just says, yeah, now we're getting the Spider-Man. Well, that's so. it. Like... There's at least that, but it would still, they wouldn't be able to hold on to the integral, you know, character of the Spider-Man that they've created in the MCU because he's kind of effectively, you know, uh, Iron Man Jr. Well, that's so, just it. It's like, Tom so Holland is, is down to two <laughs> other, to do two more Spider-Man movies yeah. uh, in, in his contract. Uh -huh. But if it comes down to it and Sony has to be making these movies without... Uh, any of the other characters yeah. without being connected to the MCU at all, and they can't mention any of it. I mean, they're recasting uh, people in the DC Cinematic Universe. Yeah. Even though, like, in the middle of, like, you know, oh, Ben Affleck is out, Ezra Miller might be out, Henry Cavill might be out, but we're not rebooting everything, we're just recasting yeah. people. Well, they recast the Hulk, I mean, you know, in the MCU, so, and that turned out fantastic, so yeah. it's possible for them to do that, and it would still be fine. Yeah, so I'm, I'm just hurt, thinking, but, I'm just saying, well, I'm not talking about necessarily the quality of the movies, but more that just... If they're forced to start moving forward yeah. in the movies, even though he has a contract, they might just say we're gonna have to recast him because, you yeah. know, it's just gonna be too complicated to keep right. going with. Well, that's the thing though. They would have to recast the character though. Like, you know what I mean? They'd have to recast not just Spider Man, but they would have to recast that character because that character is owned, right? In film rights. Like, they can't make a movie with. Spider -Man. Oh, no, I wasn't talking. I was talking about okay. Sony get If. Ah. If Sony's guess, making yeah, the movies, even true. though they have uh, Tom Holland on a contract, they might just let him go yeah. so they can just reboot everything. They might, um, which would really suck. I mean, that's kind of, you know, that would just be a really poor decision. If, if they had to, I'm sure they would. But, like, I, I know that they're hoping that he'll stick around for the franchise that they're hoping to boot. They, As far as I've heard, there's still going to be a Far From Home sequel. It just wouldn't have any Avengers elements in it, and it would be produced by Sony instead. I don't know exactly how that would go, um, and if that's true, because again, a lot of this is hearsay, because it did mm -hmm. just break. It's a very fresh story. Um, but uh, that being said, um, I do wonder, you know, what do you think uh, about, essentially, what do you think about the future of, uh, of Spider-Man as like a Sony figure, do you feel that they would reboot again? Do you feel like they would just do a continuation somehow, but then somehow just felt a lot of weird, important elements are just missing or rewritten? Um, what do you think that they would do? If you were in their shoes, what would you do, actually? I don't know about if I was in their <laughs> shoes. I think they're going to reboot them again. That's what oh, I was no. saying earlier. I say since they can't, I've been, that's what I was saying earlier, mm -hmm. since, they, since they can't use any of the Avengers stuff, yeah. they're, they're going to say, like, well, we can't just keep going with the story. What I think is, what I hope they do is mm -hmm. if they if they end up having feeling like they're gonna reboot him, that they do like they did, like Marvel did, and give us a Spider-Man that's already been doing stuff, right? Without yeah. without having a complete right. origin story, we don't need to know uh, see Uncle Ben die. Yeah, we don't we need really to don't. see him getting <laughs> bit by the spider. Yes. we can just 
be told it happened right. and start from the yes. middle. We've all seen and the everything. stories. Um, we've all seen the the origin story of Spider Man. I think we can kind mm-hmm. of go without some more added trauma of getting to you know see Uncle Ben die in front of our eyes again. Um, we did actually also have a good, uh, a great Spider Man movie in Into the Spider Verse. So and that was Sony. So I mean, like they're capable. You know, they have creative teams who can do this. Granted, there it was an animated film that's very different in you know scope and you know budgeting all of this. But, um, but that being said, it is possible for them to do well with the material if they really are careful with it. If they aren't just you know, if they don't just Sony it up, because we know they do have a tendency to interfere a little too much in the creative process. And honestly, that's another disappointing thing, is the yeah. fact that Into the Spider-Verse is arguably the best Spider-Man movie. Mm-hmm. A lot of people that believe that. I believe it's definitely at least been done. one of the best. Ever. But I, yeah. feel, I feel that part of the reason it is the best Spider-Man movie is because Sony was forced to be different. Yes, because that's since true. That's a good Spider-Man point. was being put, put made with the MCU and Disney characters mm-hmm. and stuff, yeah. Sony started to say, "Well, we're you know we have to do our own thing, and if we you know we want to make our own movies, and they started yeah. doing just like let's do something new and different because we can't just keep doing Spider-Man. It's like they had the entire Spider-Man franchise. They had the, the movie rights for every Spider-Man yes. character in existence." And since 2002, it's been Spider-Man with some bad guys, yes. Spider-Man with some bad guys, mm-hmm. yeah. Spider-Man with some it's bad guys. It's like a monster of the week, but with yeah. yeah. And then, really and then suddenly Spider-Man goes to the MCU, and then we get Venom, which, you know, people hated or loved or but didn't care. But it was care, successful. But it was successful <laughs> as hell. Yeah. You know, $800 million. Yes. And then we got into the Spider-Verse, which it was an innovative animation. It won awards. And it's extremely good and popular, mm-hmm. you know, and they started, you know, whether it's rumors or they started some pre-production, but they were like, well, let's make a Morbius movie. Yes. Let's make a, a Craven the Hunter, mm-hmm. uh, Black Cat and Silver Sable yeah. and, and all this other stuff. And they're like, let's start using all the other characters we have mm-hmm. access to. Yes. And so now I'm like, if they get Spider-Man back and they're not sharing it with Disney, now that they might just push all that stuff back and say, Let's just do a bunch more Spider-Man and then, yeah. you know, I guess Venom too, yeah. you know, and then they'll, we'll be stuck with, with just Spider-Man and then Venom right. sequels, right. you know, and nothing new and original except maybe a Spider-Verse sequel. Yeah. And that's a little disappointing because I know a lot of people will be like, oh, nobody cares and nobody asked for a Morbius movie or Craven the Hunter movie. But honestly, I thought those were great it ideas. That's amazing. I remember when you actually guessed. I'm going to brag on him for a second because mm. the reason why uh, he actually earned the nickname Guru in a comic book group that he ad- admins, a really big comic book group on Facebook. Um, it's, you know, thousands of members and everything. I'm bragging on you. So. <laughs> um, it's because he is an expert on pretty much all things Marvel and just a lot of things comic book in general. Like that's his forte, which is why he is my very special guest today for this subject um and uh, i know that he actually guessed it was really cool what they were going to do moving forward with the spider-man movies and i'm talking the mcu spider-man movies is he guessed he's like well if it was me i would make craven the hunter you know uh the the next villain in the mcu spider-verse and i was like oh my god when it came out that Faggy was talking about that, like just mm-hmm. a few days afterwards, I was like blown away. <laughs> so it was pretty cool. So anyway, trust him. <laughs> trust trust me when I say trust him. Um, so yeah, I think that that's a really good uh, point for sure that, you know, we're, we're not going to have the same, my problem kind of echoes that, you know, uh, concern is that regardless of whether they keep Tom Holland, they would have to basically make a new Spider-Man. I mean, he won't be the character that we know. He won't be the character that Tony died for. And I think that a lot of people have already echoed that sentiment online. Um, you know, hashtag Tony didn't die for this <laughs> is trending, I think. So um, I know Save Spider-Man is trending. It's, you know, I just, I was so excited when J. Jonah Jameson popped up and, you know, I just, anyway, um, they can't do all of that, throw all of that at us and, you know, give us so much with this character and then just suddenly just pull the rug out from under us and expect us to just go along with it. Um, I know they might still make a lot of money because, you know, kids will still go to see it, you know, their parents will still take them to see it. 
uh, whatever Spider-Man movie there is, you know, if they market to kids, they're probably going to make a good amount of money. But I don't think that they'd have the same success because one thing that, and I was watching Screen Junkies, the difference of marketing, like when Sony markets Spider-Man and just anything really, they tend to get way too overzealous about it to the point where they oversaturate the audience. Like we're not, we get tired of it. Like it's like, okay, I get it. Like you really are excited about releasing the Spider-Man, you know what I mean? So, so we'll get like several of like the same kind of movie you know, in a year or like advertisements for a similar yeah. kind of movie in a year and they don't understand how to work an audience whereas Marvel and Disney, you know, they understand how to keep us hype for, for things like the Avengers. We've stayed hype for the Avengers for the entire franchise, mm -hmm. like since Iron Man 1 and that's, in, that's insane to be able to work an audience that well. That's really good marketing and that's something that I think I'm, I'm worried, like uh, Dan Merle from Screen Junkies said, he's worried that people are going to get tired of Spider-Man. They're going to get burned out because Sony doesn't really know how to market things. And, and, I, know. and I just, I mean, partially it is marketing, but it's like it goes back to the point I made earlier. The other reason, the other thing is, is they don't have anyone else. They have Spider-Man and his villains and supporting characters. And in the Can past, you know, uh, Sony was just, let's make more and more Spider-Man movies. Yeah. And so that's why I was, you know, when Spider-Man was in the MCU or, you know, when he is in the MCU, you know, Sony's like, let's use all the other characters we had. There were talks about giving Spider-Ham his own movie or TV show so or awesome. something, <laughs> you know? And that'd be I'm hilarious. <laughs> and now I'm afraid it's like, well, it's like, yes. they don't, I feel oh, like the reason yeah. they were doing that stuff is because they're like, well, we, we don't. They you were know, forced to be creative. The, like, yeah, it's like it's now it's like really why why make a spider uh, uh, a spider ham movie or show when we can just make another Spider Man movie? Yes, you know. Yeah, and so Absolutely. going forward, I hope that maybe maybe hopefully they decide they're gonna you know keep making Spider Man movies. Yeah, if they keep uh, Spider Man and don't keep sharing him with Disney, mm -hmm. I hope yeah. that maybe they'll just uh, you know keep making the Spider-Man movies, like the supporting characters and, you know, Black Cat and, and find all the yeah. other heroes, you know, yes. maybe bring more other Spider-Man, but live action, right. make Miles Morales and Spider-Gwen live action. That would be and, amazing. You know, Some more diversity would be great too. Exactly. I mean, like yeah, that's true. Would be really hurtful. And so maybe they can do stuff like that. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I just, based on, on track record, if this, if Sony had access to all of spider-man for you know yes and they just sat on it they did for almost 20 yeah. years they've had the you know for more than 20 mm -hmm. years they've had the the movie rights to mm -hmm. well about 20 years they've had the rights to move spider-man and it was only it was once the spider-man was in the mcu that they made a, a movie about another character with venom and then miles morales mm -hmm. you know i don't think they're gonna they're gonna go back to uh yeah. You know, uh, they're going to keep going with it. They're just going to go back to just making Spider-Man. So it's like Disney will make, you know, four superhero movies in a year and they're all yes. different characters. But Sony will make four superhero movies and they're all going to be Spider-Man now. Yeah. I think that uh, the best thing we can do right now is just pray. <laughs> so um, anyway, thank you guys so much for listening, honey. Thank you so much for being my guest. I think that you've made some excellent points today and hopefully, again, prayerfully, we can only dream that Spidey will stay among us and will not turn into dust uh, as Sony is trying to and Disney are trying to snap him away from us. So let's hope and pray. Uh, anyway, thank you guys so much. I love you so much. Uh, if you like this video, uh, please remember to like, share, subscribe, or do none of those things. Whatever you want. I don't really care. You do you. Live your life. Have fun. All right. Bye, guys.